So let's go with some more of the basics. Here we have a table and you can see the word here, table with the number. So this could be one for example. And then we have the title. And then we have the title down here. So proportion of errors in younger and older groups. And then we've got the stack here, the deck, the deck going on here. And then we've got younger and older, but then they're divided up into more data here. So we have the N, lowercase n, which is the subgroup size, the M, which is the mean, the standard deviation inside of parentheses, and then we have confidence intervals. And then down here we have low, moderate, and high inside of the body. And then we have a note down here, CI equals confidence interval. Okay, so this is kind of your basic table design. Some important points to point out about the basic table design, which is easy to overlook actually, is that if you watch the, if you look at the uh, decimal point here, this is a key idea, but everyone kind of skips over this. How did these numbers line up? So for example, this is pretty straightforward. You've got these numbers lining up in a vertical way like this. But how do you make that stay exactly lined up? And, it can, and also here, you can see that these decimal points are all lined up exactly. And you may say, well, that's easy. Just use the space. Just, just go ahead and space, 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 or make it just right. And no, that's not the case. You need to use the tab control inside your word processor and you need to fix the tab. So that's pretty straightforward. So the tab for these numbers would be right around there and the tab for these numbers would be here and you use the decimal point tab, which is a little, usually in Microsoft Word, a little dot. And when you press the tab button, it'll line up those numbers on the decimal point. That's a very important way to do that. Please be careful. Do not try to align them by just doing spacing or doing it by hand a special way every time. So inside the table, it's important to remember a few points that table information should not be repeated inside of your text. That is to say, when you're using a table, don't have a table and then just say the same thing in your text. Basically, the table is things that you don't say because it's too much detail, it's too much information. So you put it into the table and then inside the text you just say what's the point, what's the conclusion, what's the outcome, what's the final numbers that come out, not having the whole table. So that's kind of a key point. When you cite a table, of course, you're going to say something like C table 1, C table 2. So for example, this would be the wrong way the table above, and then this would be the right way. Well, actually, we don't have the right way here. The right way would be C table 2, C table 1. Combining tables is a way to save space. It's easy to get confused when you're reading a paper and has too many tables. So you try to combine your tables to help the reader see everything in one place. The best situation would be one paper has one table inside. I look at that table and I can see everything in that table. But that's a really hard table to make. So what do we do? We try to make as few tables as possible. And if there's two tables and you think, hey, look, this table is reporting means and standard deviation, and this table is reporting pretest and post-test, maybe I can just put them together, somehow stack it or combine it or make a table and then separate pre and post. And that way makes it easy for the reader to hurry up and see everything in one or two or three places rather than so many tables. So try to combine tables. Stay consistent in your formatting. That is, of course, your journal that you're writing to, your professor, your school may have special rules. You need to follow those and try to stay consistent all of the time. The best way to stay consistent in Microsoft Word, of course, is to use style sheets. Here's an example of a very large table. Now this happens sometimes, it's not a great thing. It makes your paper a little bit hard to read, but here you go. 
there were lots of variables inside of this uh, survey, it looks like. So this is an interesting example that I think is very common in consumer research and psychology research, education research, and that is we have many survey questions and now we're going to try to run a factor analysis. That factor analysis is going to have loadings on it. So we need to list it all out. There's really no way around this. There's no way to get away from it. So what do we do? Well, we go ahead and list them all out. And when you get to the end of one page, you say continued. And then you go ahead and continue the table on the next page. But you must include the whole table all over again, meaning the heading of the table, the uh, top labels for all of the uh, variables that are going inside of there and you need to include the number and the title again so that the reader when they turn the page they can see all of the information that's related. So this is all one big table but you don't cut it off in the middle. And that's another thing to be careful when you're using Microsoft Word it's automatically cutting your tables across pages so please watch my video on using Microsoft Word because there's ways to stop that from happening. You want a table to be on one page, or if you break it, you want to make sure you have all of the parts at the top of the table and the bottom of the table. And you can see, in both cases, we also have notes that can go at the bottom down there, notes.